Welcome to DaVinci Academy's anatomy video series. I'm Maxwell Cooper and I'm one of the lecturers that are going to be taking you through this journey of anatomy. So in this first chapter here, we want to just kind of outline the basics of anatomy. You know, anatomy has its own language per se. And so we want to give you a foundation so you understand the terms. Um, when we, so when we refer to them in subsequent lectures, you'll know what we're talking about. In this first lecture, we're going to, take, we're going to talk about some basic positions and movements in anatomy. So the first topic will be positions in space. Now, superior and inferior. So what you want to do is have like a point of focus. So on this diagram here, we'll have this point of focus. Now, if you're superior to the point of focus, so the point of focus here is the chest. Superior to that is the head. So the head is superior to the chest. If you want to talk about inferior, that would be kind of the abdomen or the pelvis area is inferior to the chest. Same thing where like the hand is inferior to the shoulder. The shoulder is superior to the hand. You get the picture. Another way to describe vertical positions is two embryological terms, cranial and caudal. You'll sometimes use these to describe uh, adult anatomy. So in, in a developing embryo here, you'll see the head here, and then you have the tail down here. And what caudal means is it means structures towards the tail. Cranial means structures towards the head. So if you look at an adult figure here, cranial would be towards the head here. So cranial, and then caudal is down towards um, the tail version or the inferior portion of the body, so caudal. So they're analogous to, cranial is analogous to superior, caudal is analogous to inferior. So then you have anterior and posterior. Now again, you need a point of focus. So if you have the midpoint, this is a side view or a lateral view of the body. If you look here, anterior is in front of the person and then posterior is behind. So the you know the spine or the back is considered the posterior part of, is considered in the posterior part of the body. The chest or the chest wall is considered in the anterior part of the body. Another way to look at it here is so you have the heart here. This is a cross section of the of the chest. So you have your heart here, your lungs, and your lungs here, and then you have your vertebrae here. The heart is anterior to the thoracic vertebrae. You also have the aorta here that is anterior to the thoracic vertebrae, and then you could say the vertebrae is posterior to the uh, aorta. You get the picture. Ventral and dorsal. These are another um, similar embryological terms that are you'll you can, you will see used fairly frequently to describe the same kind of thing, where it's kind of in front or back. But really, you need to understand the origin of these terms. So this is a developing uh, embryo, and uh, the ventral is kind of the underside. So this is the underside. And then the dorsal is the back side, so the back or top side. And often you'll, you'll see that referred to as here, you have the spinal cord. So this is anterior, this is posterior, this is a cross section. You'll see this is like the ventral root, this is the dorsal root, ventral root, dorsal root. You get the idea ventral horn, dorsal horn. Okay. Now, there's two terms that describe uh, positions of structures in relation to the midline of the body, and that's medial and lateral. So if you draw a midline down or a line down the middle of the body here, medial is closer to the line, and then lateral is away. Now, what do we mean by that? So if something's here, this is medial versus if there's another, you know, if you have object or structure A versus structure B, A is medial to structure B, B is lateral to structure A, um, in a sense. In other ways, if you were to look at someone from this side, that would be the lateral view. So if you look at from someone from the side, that's the lateral view. If you look at a structure from the medial side, that's the medial view. So if you were to look at this surface of the arm, this inner surface of the arm, that would be the medial side of the arm. Proximal and distal. So a good way to describe this is on the extremity. So uh, proximal means, so if you pick your point of focus, we'll put it here in the proximal arm. Proximal is closer to the point of focus. So this would be proximal here. So it's proximal to our point of focus versus like the hand is distal. So that's the farthest point. So it's distal, proximal. Ipsilateral, this is to describe where what side uh, other structures are in relation to the one you're focusing on. So for example, you have the right arm is ipsilateral to the right leg. They're both on the same sides of the body. Uh, movement so if you and then often you'll have muscles that will contract and they'll cause movement to the same side of the body so if, if the muscle if the muscle contracts in the body and it causes a movement to the same side of the muscle that's an ipsilateral muscle movement 
versus contralateral. So if you have, so if we draw our midline here, if you have the, you know, point A here and then point B here, a, B is contralateral to A, it's on the opposite side. And so what you'll have is you have like a muscle in the neck here called the sternocleidomastoid, which if the right one, if the left one here contracts, it actually causes the head to move to the right. So you have the left that contracts, it moves to the right, so it moves to the contralateral side. Vice versa, the right sternocleidomastoid muscle, it contracts, it causes the head to rotate to the left, the contralateral side. So now we're going to go through some terms of movement of the human body, which you're going to hear these over and over again as we go through the subsequent chapters of this book. So the first one, you probably know it already, flexion, extension. So if you have a, you know, your forearm out this way, your proximal arm out this way, you have an angle between the two. Flexion is anything that, uh, any movement that will decrease that angle. So flexion, you flex your elbow joint here, pull your forearm closer together. If you extend it out, you want to, you're going to make that angle between the two joints larger. So you're going to increase that angle, bringing it out this way. So if you look at here, muscles contract. So the triceps here on the posterior part of your arm, it, it contracts, contracts like this. They shorten. So it's going to pull the, the forearm out this way and extend it. Abduction, adduction. For this, we've got to draw a midline here. So we'll draw the midline. Abduction is movement of a body part away from the midline. And then adduction is movement of a body part towards the midline. So it's often used for referred to movements in the upper and lower extremities. So abduction of the lower extremity would be again out this way, away from the body. Adduction would be if you had your leg kind of hanging out here, maybe you're dancing, and then you bring it back in towards here, towards the midline. Internal or also known as medial rotation. This may be something you may have not heard of before. If you haven't taken anatomy before, it's a kind of a rotational movement of the limb. Again, it applies to the upper and lower extremities. It really involves is the, so if you have your arm kind of laying at your side here, is you kind of rotate it in towards this way. So you would rotate your hand in towards that way. And then for that's for medial rotation. Now for the leg, you would also kind of, ro uh, using your hip joint, rotate it in this way. The internal rotation is of the shoulder and the upper extremity. And then in the lower extremity, it's of the hip joint. So you rotate it in this way, and you'll actually put, point your toes medially that way. External rotation, just the opposite of medial, also known as lateral rotation. Again, it happens in the shoulder and in the hip joints. And what you're doing here is you're rotating it out that way. So you'd rotate your arm out that way. You'd probably see your palm of your hand here. And then in the hip, you're going to rotate it out this way, and then your, your toes will point out laterally or toward, out towards the side. So again, that's lateral rotation versus medial rotation, which is bringing it in towards this way. So two upper extremity movements that I'll demonstrate for you are pronation and supination, and they involve moving the forearm. So pronation involves the pronator teres and pronator quadratus muscles, which we'll talk about more in the forearm lecture, and they work together to pull and rotate the distal radius from the lateral side around the ulna to the medial side. So just like this, this is pronation, causing the palm to face posteriorly and inferiorly. So if you have your arm held out like this, it'll also make the palm face towards the ground. The, other, the opposite of that is supination, where the biceps, brachii, and the supinator muscles work together to pull and rotate the radius from the medial side back to the, dist the uh, lateral side, causing pal the palms to face anteriorly or upwards. I like to think of it as like you're holding a cup of soup. So bring down a pronation, supinate it back, Holding that cup of soup. So two other movements of the upper extremity that I'll demonstrate for you are radio, radial and ulnar de deviation. Now radial deviation is bending the wrist laterally toward the radial side. So my thumb here is pointing out to the lateral side. So that's uh, radial deviation towards the radial side. And then ulnar deviation is bending the wrist medially like that toward the ulnar side. And now two movements of the, the hand or the fingers I'll show you are opposition and reposition. So opposition is simply bringing the thumb and one of the other digits together. So this is opposition, like this. And then reposition is just the opposite. So I bring these two together, reposition is bringing them back like that. Bringing them together like this, bringing them back like that. All right, and so to finish the, this movement sections out, we're gonna talk about dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And these are movements at the ankle joint. So you can see here, here's the ankle joint, tibia, fibula, coming in articulating with the foot bones. And what happens here is dorsiflexion is bending of the ankle superiorly, causing the toes to point cranially or upward. Plantar flexion 
so that's dorsiflexion. And then plantar flexion is pointing downwards, so bending the ankle downwards, and that's pointing the toes caudally. Plantar flexion is like when you step off, when you take that first step off, that is uh, plantar flexion, and then dorsiflexion is just kind of pulling your, your toes up towards you. Now, circumduction, this is a unique movement to the lower extremity. It involves the entire extremity extended, and so what happens is you'll extend your, your entire leg out, and it's a circular movement like this. You kind of rotate your leg circularly like this, and it's your, your foot moving in a circle. So to finish out this lecture, we're going to talk about some major anatomical planes. It's just an overview. Anatomical planes, they're cross-sectional cuts in three-dimensional space, so it's you know cutting this way or cutting that way or obliquely, and they're used for anatomical references, and they're especially relevant when describing radiology images because often images will be you know, taken in certain planes. So the first plane we'll look at is a sagittal plane. So this is a sagittal view of the uh, abdomen. And what happens is you draw a vertical line down the middle of the body and you divide it in half. So essentially you divide the body into two halves, like you would divide a circle in half. So this is uh, looking at one half of the body here, or one half of the abdomen. So it's right and left halves. The coronal plane is where you have a vertical plane that divides the body into a front section and a back section, and these sections are not necessarily equal. And you can see that here in this coronal plane of the abdomen here. So as you can see, you know, part of the front is cut off so we don't see the anterior abdominal wall. You, you're going right in here looking at the vessels and some of the organs within the abdomen. So that's the coronal, this would be a coronal view of the abdomen. And then lastly, you have the transverse plane. This can also be referred to as the axial plane or the axial view. And this is a horizontal plane or line that divides the body into a superior section and an inferior section. And the sections are not necessarily equal. So this is a transverse plane or axial plane of the abdomen here. And you can see, you can see the horizontal relationship of structure. So you have the liver here on the right, you have a kidney here, you have the pancreas in here and you can see kind of the anterior and posterior medial lateral relationships in the horizontal plane. And this is just to show them all three next to each other. You have the sagittal, which is the side view. You could think of it that way. Coronal view is kind of a deep front view, and then transverse or axial plane is a kind of horizontal view of the structures. So as you can see, it's three different ways of looking of the same region of the body. And that's it for lecture one.